Well, the NFL is totally different from college. Um, it's a lot faster. Um, we gotta work it as a unit. Uh, it's fun out here though. I'm having fun, so yeah. Before Lamar Jackson would become a Heisman Trophy winner, before he would set a Louisville college football record, passing for eight touchdowns in the first half of a game, before Jackson would be drafted by the Baltimore Ravens. In the 2018 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Lamar Jackson. There it is. Oh, oh, back. Back. Louisville. Okay. Before critics would say that Lamar should switch positions. The media uh, saying that they think you should change to wide receiver. Well, you know, I can't speak for the media. You know, um, you guys do their job. You know, I just do mine. You know, I stay away from it, answer their questions. I'm a quarterback. Before Lamar Jackson would throw for 324 yards with five touchdowns in the 2019 season opener and become the youngest quarterback to have a perfect passer rating. They don't get a Super Bowl out of me. Believe that. Leader. And before he would have close to 300k followers on Twitter and over a million followers on Instagram at the time of this recording. Lamar Jackson is off to a red hot start in the 2019 season, but it wasn't that long ago that many critics were doubting his ability to play quarterback. Let's take a step back for a second. It was a nice step back. But from college coaches to draft analysts, everyone told Lamar Jackson to switch positions because of his insane speed and ability to run with the football. But Lamar believed in himself and knew that he was born to be a great QB. Early on in his life, he dealt with the tragic loss of two family members on the same day, but his mother became his biggest mentor and helped him remain strong. And today, Lamar's critics seem pretty quiet. What's going on, good people, in the comment section? I hope you're having one heck of a day. My name is Jeremy Hecht, and today, I'll be walking you through the life and career of Lamar Jackson prior to fame. Here for you, of course, on Before They Were Famous. Now, I am here helping out Michael while he is living it up in Vegas. And uh, Michael, if you're doing any betting this weekend, put your odds on Lamar. That's all I'm saying. We've recently covered other football players like Odell and Michael Thomas, but we have so many guys left to do in the league, so you gotta let us know who we should cover next in the comments down below as always. But before we start, I've got a trivia question for you. Which play during a high school practice made Lamar Jackson's coach restructure the entire team's offense around Lamar? All right, I'll see you after the intro. Lamar Demetrius Jackson Jr. was born on January 7, 1997 in Pompano Beach, Florida. Lamar lost his father when he was just eight years old and lost his grandmother the same day. During the tragic time, his mother lifted him up, told him not to cry, and said that they were gonna be something someday. Felicia Jones was more than just a mother to Lamar. She was his mentor, his coach, and his first trainer. Felicia led her life and raised Lamar and his younger brother based on eight core values, God, prayer, faith, family, education, sacrifice, character, discipline. But football wasn't always Lamar's passion. In fact, at first Lamar wasn't interested in the sport at all, but his mom signed him up anyways to play just to give him something to do. And immediately it was clear that this was his calling. He outran everybody on the field in his first season with defenders barely able to lay a finger on him. Nearly every time he touched the football, he could score a touchdown easily. And quickly, Lamar changed his mind about the game. Felicia saw the talent that her son had and knew that he had a chance to become something special. So she signed him up to train with a guy named Van Peanut Warren. Warren was a local coach who specialized in developing quarterbacks. And after he saw Lamar throw him a 20 yard bullet, the two began working together on a weekly basis. Felicia would sit on the bench and study the quarterback drills that Warren would put her son through. Then she would replicate the same drills at home with the young Lamar. Lamar and his younger brother would put on their equipment and practice in the backyard. And even Felicia would dress up in full gear and would help her sons practice by tackling them. Lamar talked about the time period in an interview stating, people don't believe me. She was an athlete. She used to play basketball. She saw what we were able to do and she'd go back there and play football with us. She was just making making us tougher because she's older, so she's bringing power that we're not used to feeling. We didn't take it like anything different. Lamar admitted that his mom did tackle them a few times, but eventually his speed became far too quick for his mother to ever come close to stopping it. It was at that point that they moved on to weighted workouts, which were mandatory and took place six times per week. She continued by running the sprints for his eight-year-old team during practices, and long after Lamar went to college, Felicia continues to run practices for the next generation of kids using her eight core values. Fun fact, Lamar also played Pop Warner football against Marquise Brown. In high school, he started his career at Santa Lacey's High in Lantana, Florida, but Lamar transferred 30 miles to Boynton Beach High School. Dyer Ivory played with Jackson at Boynton Beach High School. As soon as he did a step back against Village Academy, and I just knew that he was something different. That was, that's gonna stick. 
for the rest of his life. Everybody's gonna see that from years and years on. At first, his grades were so low that he wasn't going to be able to play. So Lamar stepped it up in the classroom and earned straight A's in all of his classes. That allowed him to step onto the field. And once that happened, well, let's just say the competition was left in the dust. The athletic director recalls one of the first moments that he was wowed by Lamar's skills. My first Lamar Jackson wow moment was on the practice field and he went down to a goal line to attempt to see how far he could throw it, which he believed was the full football field, which we did not. And he slinged it from the goal line to goal line and it was eye popping. Oh my gosh, Lamar! One of his friends and teammates says that his favorite Lamar Jackson moment ever was his step back play that looked almost like a basketball step back move. As soon as he did a step back against Village Academy, and I just knew that he was something different. That was that's gonna stick for the rest of his life. Everybody's gonna see that. And his coach said, Where'd that come from? He said, I don't know. He said, I just did it. And I said, yeah, just like everything else. So yeah, high praise from Lamar's high school team. Lamar cut out all distractions and focused solely on his goal of becoming one of the greatest to ever play. One of his former classmates said that Lamar went straight home from practice every night. He didn't hang out, he didn't go to parties, he was focused on studying and on his dreams. Lamar's teammates began to join him for Sunday workouts led by, of course, his mother and Warren. Jackson said some of his teammates either threw up or couldn't finish the workouts. I'm literally just imagining his mom like running all these drills and killing it and all these kids straggling behind throwing up barely able to walk but Felicia was fair she only had one rule for her workouts she wouldn't make her kids do anything that she couldn't do herself she even once bought a 300 pound tire and a sledgehammer to flip and hit across the backyard so leading by example of course Jones joined in on the workout now that is dedication but all of that extra work paid off he had over 3,000 yards passing and more than 2,000 yards rushing in his junior and senior seasons combined. His high school coach, John Carter, called him Michelangelo with a football. But even with all of his high school glory, he was still only listed as a three-star recruit and in some places a four-star. A lot of coaches wanted to convert him into a running back or wide receiver. He was able to go from goal line to goal line without getting touched by a single defender, and he had the agility and speed that most running backs didn't even have. Lamar was also on his high school track team and ran for a record record of 11.45 seconds in the 100 meter dash. But Lamar knew that he wanted to be a quarterback and believed in himself. Even Louisville's coach was skeptical at first. Then I met him and I got to talk to him and you saw his personality and his leadership and you knew right away that you had somebody special. After receiving 15 scholarship offers, Louisville was actually his first choice, but he almost decommitted to attend the University of Florida after a last minute visit. He decided to go with his gut, which was telling him to fly with the Cardinals in Louisville. One of the main reasons he decided to honor his commitment was assistant coach Lamar Thomas. Thomas played for Boynton Beach's coach Rick Swain at Gainesville, who also coached Lamar Jackson. And Thomas was the one who recruited Jackson. After accepting an offer from Louisville, he was excited to get started with the playbook. But when he first looked at the team's plays, he says it was one of the most confusing things he's ever seen. Lamar says it looked like he was reading foreign letters, so he would wake up early every morning and go through film sessions with his coach. As a freshman in 2015, he played 12 games with eight starts and passed for close to 2,000 yards along with 1,000 rushing yards. Jackson won the MVP award at the 2015 Music City Bowl after he passed for 227 yards and two touchdowns. And he only got better from there. In the first game of his sophomore year, Lamar set a school record with eight touchdown passes, and all of them came in the first half. The offense literally could have shut down the rest of the game and not played a snap, literally just let the other team score every single drive, and they probably still would have had a close game. Okay, actually, they probably would have won if they did that, but impressive first half nonetheless. But it turns out the first half thing wouldn't be an anomaly. Against Syracuse, he scored five touchdowns in the first half, and against the number two ranked Florida State, he had four rushing TDs in the first half. Jackson led the Cardinals to their highest ranking in almost 10 years. His performance led to him winning the Walter Camp Award for Player of the Year, the Maxwell Award for Best All-Around Player in College Football, and on December 10th, 2016, he was selected as the 2016 Heisman Trophy winner. And he beat out some pretty tough competition. Westbrook, Watson, Jabril Peppers and Baker Mayfield, and that made him the first player in school history to hoist the Heisman Trophy. At Louisville, he threw for more than 9,000 yards passing with 69 touchdown passes, 
more than 4,000 yards rushing with 50 rushing TDs. But despite the awards and the stats, there were still a lot of doubters. NFL correspondents and draft analysts thought that Lamar should switch positions away from being a quarterback. But because Lamar knew what he wanted and continued to believe in himself, he declined to run the 40-yard dash during the NFL scouting combine altogether. And he opted to only focus on his passing drills. With the last pick in the first round of the 2018 NFL Draft, Lamar Jackson was selected by the Baltimore Ravens. Four quarterbacks were selected ahead of him, but this only fueled Lamar's fire to prove everyone wrong and himself right about his abilities. In November of 2018, Lamar made his first NFL start against the Cincinnati Bengals, replacing Joe Flacco at quarterback. Jackson went 13 of 19 for 150 yards along with 117 rushing yards, which became a franchise record for rushing yards by a quarterback. In the season, he finished with 1,200 passing yards, six passing touchdowns, and led the league in quarterback rushing yards. He also became the youngest quarterback to ever Ever start a postseason game. But as we know, there were still detractors. This year, he looks to shut up anybody who still has doubts about his ability to play quarterback at the highest level. And it seems like he may have already done that in the first game of the season. He passed for a career high 324 yards with five touchdowns and became the youngest quarterback to have a perfect passer rating. But he's been doing impressive things for a long time. On the first day of spring practice in high school, he ran an option play for 60 yards untouched to the house. And that play made his coach restructure the entire offense around Lamar. And there you have the answer to the question from the beginning of the video. But as for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is before they were famous. This was a fun one to write. I feel like he has a really, really inspiring story. So hopefully somebody out there who has a lot of doubters or detractors takes something away from this and always believes in themselves. Dream good, live better. I hope you have one heck of a day. If nobody's told you yet today, I love you. Follow me on Instagram. Um, subscribe to the channel. That's it. See you in the next video.